guys, today we're playing Luigi's Mansion for the Nintendo GameCube on my dad's video games. That's right, this is a single player game, so we are going to take turns to finish this game. Yeah, and we're gonna have lots of fun! The game starts with Luigi walking towards the mansion that he won in a contest. But it's actually a trap. Let this be a lesson for you guys about things that you win for free are not always what they seem. Yeah, if you see something suspicious, you should just leave it alone or walk away. That's right, very good. But Luigi doesn't know that, so he goes inside it and it turns out to be a haunted mansion. Ooh, that's pretty scary. Yeah, I don't like the looks of this. I would rather go. Luigi, are you sure you want to do this? Yes. Still dumb. He's very dumb. Oh, he he meets his first ghost very quickly and nearly gets caught but is saved at the last minute by. Dr. Egan! <laughs> Professor Ika is not that great at ghost catching, so he asked Luigi to take over for him, and that's when the game really begins. Luigi returns to the mansion, he finds Toad, who tells him that Mario is missing somewhere in the mansion. So Luigi has two jobs to do, find Mario and get rid of all the ghosts. Toad, Toad turns the lights on and now you can explore the mansion and, and, and catch some ghosts. Ghosts like to hide in furniture and sneak up on you, so you have to be careful. The way you catch ghosts is to flash a light on them to see their hearts and then quickly vacuum them up. Here you have caught all the ghosts in a room. The lights turn on and a chest usually appears in the room. The chest will give you a key, or money, or an item what Mario dropped along the way. After you get a key, Luigi will open up his Game Boy Horror, which will tell you what door the key unlocks. Not all the doors need a key to open, and some of the doors are trapped set by the ghosts that the boys might have fallen for a few times. Some rooms have special ghosts that are not caught so easily. These are mini bosses, and you have to do something special to catch them. You get a clue by sensing their hearts, and it's up to you to figure out their weakness. Go ahead, try to find me. I can see you, but you cannot see me. Sometimes the hints aren't so useful, like with this boss right here. Not seeing him doesn't have anything to do with how you catch him. You just kind of have to wait for the right moment until he stretches, and that gives you the opportunity to catch him. Yeah. My favorite mini boss is Jarvis because he bobs around and it's funny to watch. He will play a game with you that you have to freeze him seven times. If you don't freeze him seven times, you don't get to catch him. Well, if you do win and freeze him seven times, you can catch him and then he'll shoot pots at you while you are trying to catch him. My favorite mini boss is the ghost dog. It's in part because you're not really sure what to do when you first encounter him. You scan his heart and all it says is woof 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 so that's no help. 
So you walk around trying to figure out what to do, and the dog keeps barking at you, and all the barking literally wakes the dead as a ghost skeleton comes out to tell you to be quiet and throws bones at you. So you catch the skeleton ghost, who drops a bone, which distracts the dog, so that exposes his heart, and then you get to catch the dog. Another reason why I like the ghost dog is because it has one of the more fun secrets that you can do in the game. If you water the flower in this area three separate times, it will finally drop a very large gem, which is worth a lot later. And that's important for your final score at the end of the game. So I really like this area. favorite mini boss is Miss Petunia. You're wondering why? Because she's very easy. First you gotta get the ice element and then you pull back the curtain and then you freeze her and then she'll catch a cold and, and she'll sneeze and then you can catch her. Mansion is very spooky and ghosts can be found everywhere. The keys you get from mini bosses unlock more rooms of the mansion. The mansion has a lot of secrets and special rooms. I like the two secret rooms. One is the blocked one on the outside. You can get in by falling down the chimney on the roof. Inside this room will be a bunch of ghosts, some treasure, and a blue chest with a key inside. The other secret room can be entered by scanning the mouse hole in the butler's room near the door. These rooms are filled with treasure and it's important to find as much treasure as possible to get the best ending as possible. Oh, yeah. I really enjoyed the music room. The idea behind the music room is you got to go and check out every instrument that's in the room and it'll start playing a very familiar Mario tune. And then after it starts doing that, the ghosts in the room will ask you a trivia question about old Mario games. And if you get that right, then you can start the boss fight which leads to her capture. It's a really fun room to play. My favorite room is the observatory. And when... When what you have to do for this room is you have to look through the telescope and you'll see space. But when you get out, the whole room turns into space. And you have to grab a shooting star and you have to shoot the moon. And then when you shoot the moon, a path opens up and it leads to Mario's star. I like this room because it is magical. <laughs> Speaking of Mario, down the well, Luigi will pop his head out through a statue and will see Mario in a painting with King Boo. When I first came down here, I didn't expect to see Mario in a painting with King Boo. Before we talk about the bosses, we really should mention the booze. There's one part of the game where Luigi is looking for Mario and he finds a secret room. So he goes over and he pushes a button and oh no, he accidentally releases all of the booze. There are 50 booze in the game, and after he releases them, they hide everywhere in the mansion. And you have to catch at least 40 of them before you are able to fight big King Boo. If you catch less than that, King Boo will just blow you away, and you'll have to go find booze before you can try and catch them again. Catching the booze is a fun little side adventure that happens throughout the game. Every room that you're in will ha have a hiding booze somewhere, 
And you'll know that because your Game Boy Horror will have a blinking red light. You go over to furniture and try and see which one they're hiding in, and after you find it, they'll pop out and give you an opportunity to catch them. Unlike the other ghosts in the game, they're a lot easier to catch. They don't squirm very much, but they do escape easily. So sometimes you'll have to run back and forth trying to catch them. There are four bosses in the game. First is Chauncey, who is a baby, who shoots rocking horses and bouncy balls at you. You have to wait for a bouncy ball, then you can shoot at him, which will oppose his heart and let you catch him. The second boss is Bogmire. You have to suck up shadows from other ghosts that are in his area and shoot them at him to make him vulnerable. The third boss is Boo Losses, who is made out of a bunch of boos. You have to poke him with the unicorn statue to make him pop. After that, you have to freeze the boos and suck them up to win this battle. The final boss is King Boo. When you go to his lair, he'll turn the Mario painting into a Bowser painting, and then he'll suck you up in there. This is the final boss fight. Bowser will shoot fire at you on the ground, and he will throw spikes at you. He will put his head down, open his mouth, and you want to shoot the spike out at his face. And then um, King Boo will come out with 500 health, while Bowser is shooting some sort of element or something at you when you're trying to get King Boo into your culture ghost. Repeat this process enough and you'll eventually catch King Boo. After you've caught King Boo, then you return back to the secret altar where King Boo is keeping the Mario painting. You take the Mario painting off the wall, and then you return to Professor Egad's lab, as you do with after you beat every boss, and turn all of your caught ghosts into paintings. He starts by emptying his portrait ghosts into Professor Egad's machine. All of the ghosts that were caught get turned into paintings. After the ghosts are taken care of, you get to see how much money you found in the mansion this round. And then it's Mario's turn to go through the machine, but it's in reverse. That turns him back to normal, and Luigi is overjoyed to see his brother again. The very last screen of the game shows the mansion you've earned for finding all that money. Okay guys, so what do we think of Luigi's Mansion? I think this game is fun because it has secrets, like secret rooms and secret gems that you find that have a, worth a lot of money. I also like fighting the poor trick ghosts because they will have a mini puzzle for you to solve and then you can suck them up. I also like this game because you get to collect boos and the boos faces are so adorable. I like watching the ghosts turn into paintings that you've caught, and then after, I like seeing how much money I've made. Okay, boys, so what would you give this game out of 10? 10. 10. 10 out of 10? Yep. Really? No faults whatsoever? It's a perfect game? Perfect. Perfect. Well, there you have it. Luigi's Mansion is a perfect game. I guess there's only one thing left to do, boys. Thanks for watching.